When we first arrived here down in the race village this morning and it was the wind was like 10 to 14 knots it was a lot more than had been forecast and and I thought that it would be a very positive day for Oracle looking at that the the boat setup looked kind of perfect for that but about 15 20 minutes before race the first race of the day it dropped down to sort of eight nine ten knots and suddenly we saw Team New Zealand get strong again and and I think that just the consistency of their maneuvers when the wind drops that bit and their dagger boards that they're using just really um lent themselves to the conditions a lot better today. Could you say anything about what percentage you think this is about the, the platform and the package they have versus their sailing technique and their tactics? Uh, well, I think in the early races, I mean, last weekend we saw for sure that Emirates Team New Zealand were faster. Um, I think the Oracle did an incredible job in the five day break to make their boat quicker and, and we've definitely seen their boat quicker in these last few days. One of the difficult things I think for Oracle though has been that the boat has looks to have got harder to sail and we're seeing a few unforced errors and, and that's not very characteristic of those guys um, and we've very rarely seen them make any unforced errors in the last two years that we've been here training racing. So. It's not quite been the same Oracle Team USA that we've come to know, um, but I suspect a bit of that is to do with making the boat that much harder to sail. So they've evolved it very quickly in short time, making it a little bit less stable, more difficult to, to anticipate? Yeah, I, I, I think they've made the boat fractionally harder to sail. You know, that you can push things in certain configurations and the settings. The boat, the more, the less foil you sail with the boat in the water, the, the harder the boat is to sail, but the faster it goes because it has less drag. So those are the kind of things that they'll be pushing as hard as possible, flying the boat as hard as they can out of the water, having the rudders as far out of the water as possible, and all those things make it much higher risk and harder to sail. What are the things that you've specifically noticed that they've changes, changed, you know, particularly you know, out of the water? Mm, well, the obvious visual ones are that they're using their high-speed dagger boards now down the range, and what they've done is they've, they've added some extensions to those boards, which, I mean, that pushes the structures very, very hard. Those are things that they've had to do um, to be able to be competitive, and unfortunately for them, there's no real breeze on the horizon, so the structures won't become an issue unless it gets windier. Um, it looks like they've done some little changes to the rudders and things like that and then, then a lot of the rumours are that they've taken a lot of weight off the boat and all those things are optimising for the lighter air conditions that it seems like Team New Zealand have, have come into the event a lot more optimised for initially. And what about Team New Zealand, Emirates Team New Zealand, do you think that we know pretty much what they've got on board the boat or have they got more secrets yet to reveal? I think there's a lot of stuff on that boat that not a lot of people know about and um, Team New Zealand were very very aggressive with a lot of the design decisions that they made and even for me as a sailor from one of the teams and, and a team that worked very closely with Oracle you know uh, I've got a lot of respect for the aggressiveness of the decisions that they made it's it's hard to push the envelope as hard as they did and they did it not here in Bermuda and came very late and I think that the teams that have been here in Bermuda we, we were very strong um, Artemis and Team Japan and, and Oracle but Emirates Team New Zealand really went some different paths and I think we're seeing that now. And what do you think are the key things that they've done the key innovations? I mean well the obvious one is the side claws and that's that's kind of a, a visual aesthetic thing that you can't miss um, but that means that they're hands-free, so they're able to operate different functions that are a bit more intricate than the things that you can do with your feet, which is what the grinders are doing. I think ultimately aerodynamically, if the grinders are kneeling, then it's better aero, but if the grinders are having to stand because they're spending a lot of oil, then it's better aero to be cycling. Um, I think we're seeing that Blair Chute flies the boat, and on the other boats, um, the Helms have been flying the boat, so they're very much focused on that. But on the Team New Zealand boat, Pete is able to look around and make a lot of the tactical decisions while the boat is flown for him. Um, then they trim the wing in a very different way. Um, they're very aggressive with the twist and they're using the twist of the wing a lot more than they're using the wing sheet like the Traveller, which is quite different to how the other teams have been operating. And, and I suspect that having more oil and more wattage coming from the side claws is one of the things that helps them do that. There's a lot of rumours about the way um, Team New Zealand fly, are flying the boat and there's a lot of suggestions that they use a very similar thing to um, like a fighter jet where when the fighter pilot moves is the joystick forwards it, it, it does a lot of the calculations for them and um, there's a lot of suggestion that that's what Blair has. Um, 
within the rules there has to be a human input and and that's still there and and Team New Zealand, well, Team New Zealand, all the teams are looking for the loopholes in the rules and pushing the rules as hard as they can. And, and Team New Zealand have done a great job of that. Well, let's uh, imagine there was a completely blank sheet to take this boat on a step for the next cup. What, what do you think are the main improvements that could be made to make them more exciting or possibly go faster? Um, it, it's hard to make the boats actually have a much higher top speed. Um, we start to have real issues with cavitation and that's what limits the boats to the sort of 44, 45s, 46s that you see. Um, and it's hard to make foils that will not cavitate but perform well um, in the lighter air or when they're going upwind. So I don't necessarily that we'll think that we'll see the boats get an enormous amount faster but we will see the in, in the percentage gains that we're seeing continue to increase and I think we'll have much more refined systems. It's, in, it's insane to think about where the boats are compared to where we were in San Francisco and um, yeah the evolution is just incredible and I think I'd be an idiot to try and guess where the boats will be for the next America's Cup. They could be anywhere. Well one surprise is just how, um, how complex the tactics have been. People said there wouldn't be any match race tactics or few of them and that's not been the case but if anything they've been restricted a little bit by this um, uh, rule that governs um, how you generate hydraulic oil pressure. If you, if you were to relax that rule, perhaps there'd be more tactics up the course. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting discussion. Um, the, the tactics, that we've managed to make it so we can sail the boats pretty well tactically, like you say, but you can't do everything that you want. And also, really, the front three guys are not really sailing the boat. They're really just producing oil. And um, it could be interesting to have in some ways bring back and to have engines and be able to actually sail the boat you know on our boat i was trimming the wing and the jib um and steering out the maneuvers you know and doing the tactics and 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 then dino's driving and flying the boat all the time so the and the other four guys are doing like strategy and some they're getting some help there and the guy has another guy has a really important role where they're dropping the boards and foiling the boat through the maneuvers but Essentially, they're producing energy all the time, and it could be interesting if you did have some engines for sure, and and people start sailing the boat properly again. So you would think that might free people up to do different and more interesting tasks. Yeah, I mean, you'd for sure have somebody trimming the jib, you'd have somebody um, calling tactics, and you'd um, yeah, you'd probably have a foil, somebody that flies the boat all the time, like Team New Zealand have managed to do with their cyclos and it would change a lot and maybe for the better who knows it's also it's a great part to have the athleticism and I think that's something that's bit pretty cool that's become a case with the sport it's difficult to know where it should go and um, I think if Team New Zealand win you know I think the boats are likely to be quite different and um, if Oracle managed to come back then we know that it will stay in boats that are very similar to this so it's who knows where it'll go but either Whichever, whichever situation does occur, I think it would be great to take some of the good aspects of this America's Cup. Well, looking into your crystal ball, where do you think New Zealand, if they win, might take it? Um, it's, I don't know. I don't know. There's lots of rumours of monohulls, big monohulls, and I think you'll see the likes of Alinghi, Luna Rossa all come back into the folds. and. Um, and, so, and some of the teams that are here now will stop and, and I'm sure some new teams would start. So I think it would change a lot. And, but it would, you'd imagine it would be hard as Team New Zealand having just won the cup in these kind of boats to go away from something to, to something completely different.